How are you all doing? Vertic Designs here and for today's video we're going to take a look at how to add or change clothing in Photoshop. We'll be using the powerful generative fill AI feature to automatically add clothing, change it without having to manually warp it. Now you will need the latest version of Photoshop which is Photoshop CC 2024 or at least to have Photoshop Beta 2023. This is so that you have the generative fill feature. Now, once you're inside of Photoshop, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have this toolbar right here. This is the contextual taskbar. And if yours is hidden or missing by default, you can bring this back by going to window, going down to the bottom and get yourself the contextual taskbar. What this will do is it will allow us to remove the background and later on, we will change it to match the theme that we are going with. Now, when it comes to changing clothing or adding clothing onto your subject, there is two ways that you can do this. Now, the first way is to be very specific with your selection and you can get yourself a selection tool such as the object selection tool. Making sure you are selecting the image, you would left click, drag this out and get yourself a selection box. What this will do is it will target this area. And the great thing about this is that it won't change the scale and it will also cut out the fingers for when you generate the trousers or pants with the AI. Now, the second way is to be not as specific. And the second way is to just use the selection tool. You would left click, get yourself a selection box. And what this will do is it will give the AI the freedom to be able to work within this area right here. Now, for the sake of this video, I'll be showing you all how to do it both ways. And the first way is, of course, with the object selection tool and selecting the trousers or the pants area right here. Once you've got yourself the selection and you're happy with it, you can go to the generative fill. And this is where you want to be very specific with your descriptive words. The more specific you are, the better the variation will look. Now, in this case, I really like the theme of the 1800s train conductor theme. I think it looks great. I was working on a recent project and I wanted to test out and see if it can do it. And all you need to do is simply type in 1800s Vintage black plain train on doctor uniform pants. Now, once you're happy with it, you want to click on generate, and this will start to generate this specific prompt right here. And as you can see, it's definitely giving it a go. It's not quite what we're looking for. And like I said, this is the exact problem that I'm talking about. Sometimes it will change the pose and try to move it in a different direction. This one is okay. And this one is definitely a little bit better, but so far this one is the best. Now, what we can do is we can do two things. If your variation isn't correct and you're not happy with the results, you can delete the ones that are the least favorite. And then you can also modify the prompt to be more specific, or you can remove certain words, which will then allow you to click on generate and it will try once again. And there we go. That one is by far the best one. We have a little bit at the bottom right here, but we can definitely work with this and fix it later on. This one is also okay, but it's got way too much on the edges. And for now, we're going to stick with this one. Once you're happy with your variation, you then want to minimize this, and we're going to move on to the blazer. Now for the blazer, we also want to use the selection tool, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we are on top of this layer right here. And then you want to get yourself a selection box around here. You also want to make sure that you hold Alt Option key, left click and drag this out to slightly cut off the selection. You just want to make sure that you have around 50-50 when it comes to the neck area. And then once you've got yourself the selection, we're going to click on generative fill. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to type in 1800s vintage train conductor uniform blazer. And then we're going to put in a comma black with a black bow tie. Go ahead and click on generate and let's see what this creates. And that's not too bad. I mean, it's a little bit bigger. It's not what we're looking for. This is definitely something that we're looking for. And this one is a little bit better. We do have something that we can work with. What we're going to do is we're going to delete this one and we're going to focus on these two. Now you can also from here, you can expand and make this prompt even better. And what I've done is I've created this prompt right here. 
where we start off on the top one, which is the blazer. We want a 1800s vintage train conductor black uniform blazer, double button, silver buttons, closed up side pockets. And we can also add in some details such as a white shirt, detailed clean fabric and black bow tie. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on generate. And we are slowly getting there. This one is really nice. I really like the look of this one. And this one is okay. But like I said, once again, you can see his body frame is looking a lot skinnier now. But this one we can definitely work with. We still have his original body size. The only downside to this is that it's tried to blend it in right here. We can also sometimes fix this by getting ourselves the selection tool. What we would do is we would either have a look at this layer and we can left click, drag this out. We can type in black blazer lines, click on generate. It's not quite added what we're looking for. Maybe those words weren't specific. I suppose we can also stick with this one. This could also work. And what we're going to do now is of course, we're also going to apply a hat because to finish this look off, we definitely need a train conductor hat. And to do this, we're just going to zoom in. For this one, you want to make sure that you are selecting yourself the main image and you want to left click, drag this out and get yourself a selection box. Now with this selection box, you also want to make sure that you get a decent height with a decent size on the selection. We're going to click on generative fill. And for this one, we're going to type in 1800s vintage train conductor hat comma black. And let's see what this creates. Now that is not exactly what we're looking for. The other variations are even worse. What we're going to do is we're just going to slightly modify this prompt and we're going to change it to 1800s vintage black train conductor hat. And hopefully it will do a better job this time at creating this variation. And there we go. That is looking a lot better. We can definitely work with this. What we're going to do is we're going to stick with this one and we're going to remove this gold bit right here and also these areas right here. Now, as you can also see, it's cut off the sides, but that's completely fine because what we can do is we can actually use the selection tool to just get ourselves a selection outside of the box or the area. Using the plus, we can also add in the second side as well. All you need to do is go to the generative fill, leave this blank and click on generate. This will just fill in those missing areas. And there we go. We now have this variation. We can also make them pointy or have this one as well. But definitely the first one is the best. And there we go. We now have a full on outfit that we can work with. Now, the first thing, as you can see, and as you can notice is the neck area. You could definitely tell the difference between the AI generated outfit or the neck and the original image. Now to fix this is so simple. If we have a look at this area, the simplest fix is to find the neck area, which is this layer right here and selecting the mask using a brush tool. We can also select a black color to subtract it from here using the square bracket on our keyboard. We can make the brush a little bit larger and just make sure it's on 0% for the hardness. You just want to paint it onto here and blend it in with the original. You also want to leave a little bit of detail on the edges for the shadows. And there we go, that is looking better. And of course, the next step from here is to also remove the background because we don't need these random parts of the background. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the hat. You want to make sure you have both of these layers selected. Pressing Control or Command and J, we're going to duplicate it. And you want to keep these two as a backup. You always want to back this up because now we're going to right click and convert to a smart object. We also want to rasterize this layer to be able to edit it. This will just compact everything back into one layer. And using the object selection tool, we can get ourselves a selection of the hat. And then you just want to mask out this layer. 
To fix up the unwanted areas, we can use the powerful remove tool. And all we need to do is left click, get yourself a selection around it, let go of it, and it will fill it in and remove this area. Same goes for these areas as well. And we're also going to fix up this area as well. Once you've done that, we can zoom back out. And for me personally, this hat is looking way too plain. What I like to do is I like to add in a silver plaque onto this area right here. And you can do this by using the polygonal lasso tool. You want to get yourself a selection of where you want it to appear. Connect it up, get yourself to the generative fill, and then we're going to type in a silver plaque with the numbers 4521. Click on generate and let's see what this creates. And that's not too bad. I do like the look of this. Ooh, the second one is even better. And the third one is not great. We're going to delete the last one and just generate once again with this one. And that isn't great. I would definitely say this one is really good. We have a, a little bit of distortion on the four, but we can delete this one, delete the second one, and we can work with this one. And for me, I'm going to stick with this one as the best one that we've generated. We're just going to minimize this and also fix up this part of the hat. Going back onto this layer, using the polygonal lasso tool, subtract it from here, And we're just going to press G for the bucket tool, left click with a black color and fill this in. And as you can see so far, this is actually looking fairly good. I am happy with the results. We also need to fix up the trousers at the bottom right here. And to fix this, we may need to switch to the clone stamp tool. This one will never let us down because we can use the N square bracket on our keyboard. We can just make sure that we are selecting this layer hold an alt, left click on here, and then just add it onto here. We're just going to paint it on, and then also switch to the healing brush tool. And there we go, that is looking a lot better. We're also going to remove the background from the blazer. Pressing Ctrl or Command and J, hiding the one underneath it, and then once again, rasterize this layer. Using the object selection tool, we're going to select the outfit. Double check in the selection and everything is good. We may also need to fix up this area with the polygon lasso tool and just subtract it from here. We want to press Control, Shift, and I to invert the selection. We also want to include this one as well. And then using the bucket tool, selecting the mask, left click and paint on this area. If you see parts of the background or parts of the person, you will also need to duplicate the original image as a backup by right clicking on it. Duplicate layer, hide the one underneath it or the original, and then select the name mask. You want to press B on your keyboard to get yourself the brush tool. Subtract it from here. And then finally, to change the background, we're going to hold Shift and then left click on the bottom one. Get yourself a group. Press Ctrl or Command and J to get yourself a copy of it and have the one underneath it as a backup. With the top one, we're going to convert it to a smart object. And we just need this for the selection. We can hold Ctrl, left click on here to get ourselves a selection. We can press Ctrl, Shift, and I to invert the selection. And we're just going to click on Generative Fill and type in whatever you want the background to be. Now for me, I want to match it with the outfit and we're going to type in 1800s train station 
with a steam train behind the subject. Click on generate and let's see what this creates. And that one isn't too bad. It's definitely okay. This one, he is full on on the train tracks. And this one, it looks like he's at the side of the train. We could definitely work with this one. I do like the look of this one. And once you're happy with your selection or the background, you may also run into this little problem right here. Now, I'm not sure why this happens, but to fix this, all you need to do is get yourself a few different copies or the same copy of your background. And what this will do is it will fill in those transparent pixels and make it solid once again. And that's pretty much it. That is how you add or change clothing in Photoshop. You may also like this next video up on the screen. But until next time, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.